welcome back to Simojo Homestead. We are out here at our campsite because it feels really good in the woods. Uh, the last few mornings have been amazing. amazing. Yeah, like it feels like fall, which is oh, made me realize I'm so ready me for too. fall. Me too. So uh, bring me some pumpkin spice donuts. <laughs> hey, I tried. Okay. <laughs> so, it's okay. Yeah, but um, moving on. Today's video, we're gonna do um, kind of two things. We're gonna do a little DIY project. We're gonna uh, make our hay feeder a little bit more of a permanent structure. And then we're gonna go to the kitchen for a recipe. Spice up our videos a little bit. There's a little clue. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> so, but first, we're gonna do our highs and lows. This is a weekend video, so it's highs and lows time. Um, I think I'm gonna start this week. Yeah, because I don't know what I'm doing, so it's all you. Okay. Uh, so, my high is, it kind of goes along with fall weather. It is that football is finally starting. Uh, definitely, like, love football. It's a big thing in our house. And, you know, last year it just wasn't the same. Just season being so different, no fans in the stands and stuff like that. So uh, this year, super excited about it. Um, we are recording this Saturday morning. And so by the time we release this, I'm hoping I will still be as excited. Because <laughs> if you can't tell, we got a big game tonight. So my low, other than these insects that keep coming in and out, and I know they're coming through on the video, is the fact they had no pumpkin spice donuts this morning. Terrible. Ugh, I know, Terrible. I was so devastated. Wasn't really even expecting them to have it because I felt like we were still a little bit early, but you know, everybody pushes them out soon. And so when we went to the restaurant and I saw that they had them, I was like, yes. And we got up there and ordered and they told me they were out. And I was like, devastated. It's terrible. I know. It's terrible. I had already mentioned that like this weather made me want pumpkin spice donuts. And right. when I heard that he was going this morning, I thought, oh yeah, that means I'm getting my pumpkin spice donuts because if I know my husband, he's gonna come back with them for me. And then he didn't. I tried. He tried. tried. That's all that matters. Yeah. So what about you? So my high is dance starting back. It was great to see the girls and be there at the studio with them again. Um, I think it's gonna be a really fun year. So I was excited about that. Um, my low, well, my aunt left, so that was kind of hard, really hard. Um, I wasn't ready for her to go. And also, um, just some, you know, stress, I think, of, for the girls starting back. There was, um, it was audition week, so there was a little extra tension and stress in the house. So that wasn't very fun either. Yeah. That's it. That's it? That's all I got. Oh, oh that was easy enough. So for the hay feeder, um, we get the big like 800 pound bales for the cow. And then we just pull off of that for the goats. Um, we've had it set up in kind of a temporary way. It's right now it sits on a pallet and then we have cow panels that we've cut down to the right size and sort of made a square around it. So they can stick their heads through, but it also helps to still keep the hay contained. The reason we made one is we looked into getting one that you can just buy, uh, but those were really expensive. Yeah, and we had the stuff laying around, so. <laughs> yeah, we had the extra material. Um, I was like, you know no what? Breaker. I think this could work just as well. And it really has, it's worked really yeah. good. Now that it's that really first good. bale is almost gone though, I think we're gonna stick with that. But like I said, make it a little bit more permanent. So essentially what we're gonna do is put in four posts at each, or one post at each corner, and then attach the cattle, cattle panel to that. But we will still leave one side where it's kind of hinged so that we can open it, get into it, um, just to pull, pull out, also to be able to load the new bale in. And with that, we're also gonna create a roof that goes over it so they can keep it dry. What we've been doing is just a tarp and that tarp is like on its last leg. It's struggling. Yeah. It's struggling. Uh, it was <laughs> just a medium duty tarp. <laughs> just to pull enough tension, just to like have it, you know, kind of flat was already starting to tear it. So 
<laughs> did it not did hold not up very work. well. It's then you okay. added rain to it and it really started tearing up. Um, I mean, it's barely hanging on right now. So, <laughs> uh, but it got us through. Yeah. Got us through the first veil. So now we're gonna actually do a permanent roof over that and that should help us out a yeah. lot. I think that's like the, a big thing with homesteading though, is like you try stuff and you realize, hey, this needs to be tweaked here or there or whatever. That's what's great about using kind of what you have around because then you can really figure out what you need, how you need things to work and what doesn't work. And then you can adapt and you didn't waste like thousands of dollars in the process. Yeah, and that's a good point. I mean, that's one thing, like we had the materials laying around. Uh, it was something that we wanted to experiment with because we were building it. And mm -hmm. the big thing with a hay feeder is you want to, well, the main thing is you want to make sure your animals can have access <laughs> right? to it. It's important. But two, to keep it contained to minimize the waste. And waste meaning everything that falls on the ground outside of it. Because that is all subject to, you know, the poop, the pee, and all that stuff. And you don't really want your animals eating what's been on that. Yeah. So uh, that is all considered the waste. But I really have been impressed with how well this is done. Mm -hmm. And um, the cow can still get his head through it. Um, we may have to make some adjustments if he gets bigger because I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to stick his head through those openings. But um, for now, it's working great. Yeah. And we'll cross that bridge then. those up so we've got four in i'm not real worried about them all being the same height and everything else we're putting a roof on it it has to have some slope so i knew that if i didn't measure everything we'd have enough i would just face the metal roofing in the direction it needs to go to shed that water off um, i did make sure that the slight downhill of the terrain were the lower posts those posts were lower but other than that didn't really do that didn't even really check to see if they were level what i'll do is just measure the top of them get it close and then fasten the horizontal supports that we're gonna put across the top of the, the uh, post to just kind of shore up everything and also to give something for that roof to attach to. So, finished this almost. Um, we do still have to put the cattle panel up, which we will do when the new bale of hay comes next week. I uh, want to leave it around what's left of that last bale just to keep the baby goats out so they don't poop in there and then start eating it. So, we do need to leave that up, but those will come apart. Come over here, we'll attach it to these posts. And like I said, we'll hinge the one on that side so that we can just pull the tractor in, load it, and shut it back up. So, Really happy with how it came together, and hopefully this thing will last us for a lot of years. So that was Jeremy's project for the day. Now let's go to the kitchen and spice things up with our hot sauce. Hey guys, so yesterday we ended up having some family time and cleaning up some stuff in the garden and just didn't end up having time to do the, um, the recipe for today. So we're back, it's a new day and we're ready to make some hot sauce. So the hot sauce we are making today, get a few ingredients, you blend them together until they're smooth, and then you put them in a saucepan and boil them. It's really, really, really easy. We'll go ahead and get started. The first thing we're gonna start with is onion. Now, you can use either one large onion or you can use a tablespoon and a half of onion powder. Today, I'm using the onion powder. Um, I don't know if y'all are like me, but chopping onions makes me cry. So I wouldn't want to do that on camera anyway. So my son likes to watch us cook. He likes to help cook. 
And whenever we're cutting up onions and our, our, our eyes start watering, he says that the onions are doing their thing. So it's come to, it's now become an expectation that whenever anyone cuts up onions, that they should be fine. Okay, so we did our onion. Now we are going to add some garlic. And this is actually a lot of garlic. We're gonna add four tablespoons of garlic. So one, two, three, now we have not mastered getting enough garlic and onions for our house for a year. I have to say, we use a lot of garlic and onions. So that's like kind of one of my goals for next year is to figure out how to grow enough garlic and onions to be able to kind of replace some of these things that I'm using. But one thing we can grow is oregano. And so we just got a bunch of oregano and we're just gonna throw it in there. Um, I'd say that's maybe roughly a, a teaspoon, half a teaspoon you can use, um, but we just got a bunch and throw it in there. The other thing we use now is some cumin, and we are going to put in a half a teaspoon of cumin. Okay, so, I was using, I realized I was using my dry container and we actually need to use the wet container. So I had to do a little switch. I also added um, some mustard seed. It actually calls for mustard powder, but the stores didn't have any mustard powder. So I got mustard seed and we put in a half a teaspoon of that. So moving right along. Okay, so next we're gonna add turmeric. I need a half a teaspoon of turmeric as well. If you can't tell, after the garlic, you just add a half a teaspoon of everything. So there's our turmeric. Next, we need a half a teaspoon of black pepper. I am adding also a half a teaspoon of smoked jalapeno powder. These are, this is powder um, that we made last year. So if you don't have it, you can just omit it, but we want that smoky flavor. So I'm adding a half a teaspoon of this as well. It's actually not very hot. It's just really smoky. So um, that'll be nice to have in there. So these are all of our seasonings that we are going to put in there. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our hot peppers. We are adding poblanos, jalapenos, hot banana peppers, and cayenne peppers. Um, and we're just, I didn't, measure a certain amount out. We just need two pounds of hot peppers. I basically just threw hot peppers in there while the, the bowl was on the scale. So I wasn't really paying that much attention to it. I was just throwing in hot pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and add this. I have four cups of vinegar, of white vinegar measured, and it's off to the side. We're going to use that as our liquid in our, um, in our hot sauce. So that's what we're gonna use to blend this down. <laughs> Make sure your peppers are blended, blended really well. Um, you may have to do it in batches, depending on the size and strength of your blender. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour this into a saucepan. And, and then I have reserved about a cup and a half of vinegar. I'm gonna pour that in here and use that to get all of the remaining bits from our peppers. So I went ahead and I added my vinegar and I turned the blender on again just to get everything cleaned off the blades. I'm going to pour the rest of that in there. I'm not gonna stress too much about the foam or anything like that. Now that this is in the saucepan, I'm gonna turn on my heat and bring it to a boil and then I'm gonna reduce the heat and let it simmer for 15 minutes. Okay, so it has simmered for 15 minutes. It is officially done. It smells amazing, hot, but amazing. Um, at this point, you could can it 
or you could just put it in jars and put it in the refrigerator. We have some more peppers that we're actually going to try to ferment and make another type of hot sauce with. If that works, we will update you on that later. Thank you guys for watching and hope you guys are having a great Labor Day weekend as well. We sure have. We've tried to make it a little bit relaxing between all of the chores and just other stuff that we have to get done. Yeah. Um, I hope you try that recipe. It is our favorite hot sauce recipe because it's our only one so far. Yeah, it's the only one we've tried. <laughs> but as Cass had mentioned at the end of that segment, uh, we are going to be trying another one with uh, fermenting hot peppers. And so we'll see how that one turns out. And if it turns out good, we will do a video on that one later because yeah. I'm kind of excited about trying that one. Add a little um, extra dimension of flavor and stuff yeah. in there with the fermentation, so. Yeah, and it'll last a little longer, so that'll be nice. So once again, thanks for joining us and be blessed. <laughs>